Welcome to the fourth and final video in our RoboLogix tutorial series 2. This four-part series has been focused on application-specific features associated with each of the environments within RoboLogix. In this animation, we'll be revisiting the pick-and-place environment in order to review the operation of the palletize instruction. This special purpose instruction is used to stack boxes on a pallet in a user-defined pattern. The pattern gets defined when the palletize instruction is being added to the program. The palletizing command setup dialog box allows the user to define how many rows, columns, and layers of boxes will be stacked by the instruction. For the remainder of this tutorial, we'll be working with this basic palletization program. On closer examination, it can be seen that 80% of this program is familiar to us already. We use the same conditional branching program to move several boxes from Conveyor 1 to Conveyor 2 in a Series 1 tutorial. Instead of placing boxes on Conveyor 2, we'll be stacking them on a pallet this time. This means that we can replace the code for Conveyor 2 with instructions designating the pallet as a new target location. The palletize instruction comes with a partner, the end pal instruction. These two instructions serve as delimiters, marking a zone in which position register data can be modified. In this instance, the target location for the first box is being stored to the position register location with an index value of 3. On each pass, the previous position value is being modified by the palletize instruction. The position value is modified according to the pattern specified by the row column layer data provided by the user. To understand the way in which the value is being modified, we need to take a look at the box dimensions as well as the spacing of the boxes on the pallet. The boxes we're using in this environment have a length and width of 20 units and a depth of 10 units. In addition to the 20 unit box width, two units are being added for spacing, bringing the distance to 22 units from center to center. This allows for the end effector to get in and pick up or drop off a box. The P3 position register data is being modified according to this pattern and spacing. Now that we know the incremental value of the position changes, we can move on to calculate the pattern positions. This illustration provides a perspective from camera 12 looking directly down at the pallet from above. Movement from the top towards the bottom of the figure constitutes a positive change in your x-coordinate value. Movement from left to right constitutes a positive change in your z-coordinate value. Only X and Z values need to change to complete the first layer. In this illustration, the original box position is shown in yellow. The coordinate information for each box in the first layer is also provided. The additional box locations are calculated from the original position stored in P3. The first box on the next layer shares the same X and Z coordinates as our origin point box. The significant difference here is that the Y coordinate has increased by 10. The application will go on to reproduce the entire first layer, this time with a Y coordinate of minus 28 instead of minus 38. All of this modification to position register 3 happens automatically. The user need only define an origin point and the instruction takes care of the rest. This brings our Part 4 Series 2 tutorial to a conclusion. As we have seen in our RoboLogix Series 2 tutorials, this simulation tool features four simulated robotics applications that can be programmed by the user. These environments all have instructions and settings specific to each individual industrial application. The spot welding application allows the programmer to specify target positions by jogging to and saving up to nine desired weld locations for use with the spot weld instruction. The arc welding application uses a path weld instruction that allows the programmer to define multiple welding path segments using a mouse. 
The spray painting application includes instructions that allow the programmer to define the color, thickness, and coverage area to be used with the available paint instructions. And last, the Pick and Place application provides a wide variety and a very flexible programming environment. All four of the available application environments provide the user with the ability to utilize both online and offline programming techniques.